The Irish novelist Cecilia Ahern made her debut in the publishing world with P.S. I Love You back in 2004. Fifteen books later, uh, we get to her newest. It's titled Raw, and it's a collection of 30 short stories about 30 women who are at pivotal points in their lives. I caught up with her over breakfast, where she started off by telling me about her initial struggle to get this book published. For the last five years, I wasn't sure if there was going to be a place in the publishing world for them, because I always write novels. Mm. Um, and so I just kept writing for myself, but was also trying to get them made for, as a TV series. And the excitement that I was getting from friends mm. <clears throat> was very different to what I was receiving in the pitch room. Um, but what happened was, uh, January of last year, I went over to LA to do some pitching for TV mm. about totally different ideas. And they said to me, well, what are you most passionate about at the moment? And I started talking about these stories and immediately the air changed in the room. You know, women were crying, we were laughing, we were sharing stories, and I think I think what happened is that it, Trump was inaugurated that week and the Women's March was due to take place that weekend. And so emotions were really heightened. People were fearful, they were sad, but they were also wanting to take action and start telling more women's stories. Mm -hmm. So the timing wasn't right five years ago, but it was, it's absolutely right now. It's that wonderful quote, I am woman, hear me roar. Yeah. Um, what's the story in this book that particularly resonates with you? What makes you roar? Oh. All 30 of them? <laughs> uh, you know, one, one story that, was, that really resonates with me is the guilt story. So the woman who found bite marks on her skin um, is, a young, is a mother returning to work after maternity leave. And she finds these bite marks all over her skin. They grow by day. And she realizes that the guilt is eating her alive. Now, you don't just have to have children to feel guilt. I think as women, we, we're just made of, you know, not all women, but many of us are made of guilt and feel it so easily it's on the surface all the time we have we have so many different relationships with people with people in our lives we have to be so many different people and i think we often feel guilty that we're not being enough to all of those people in our lives so i kind of that's a, a special one to me i can relate to and i the day i wrote it i remember leaving my child at home who cried Wah! you know as i was leaving the house brought my daughter to montessori cried as i left her and i just sat into my car and cried and that was the day i wrote that story Obviously, in Ireland, there was the big abortion debate. Yeah. Was that an undercurrent when you were writing? Yeah, it was, actually. And, um, oh, God, I mean, it's been such a sensitive topic for so long in Ireland, for, for so very long, not just leading up to the referendum. Um, but I was also... And, and so there was huge debate and huge discussion, and, and so much of it just by men, you know. And I remember sitting there and listening to men talking about women's bodies and thinking, where is the female voice? You know, of course men are entitled to their opinion, but we are too. And so that story uh, is about a man who tries to have a vasectomy, but he has to sit with a, a panel of women who have a say and control over his body. And I just wanted to flip, you know, I just wanted to flip the story and, and change the perspective. There is no area really where a man doesn't have control over his own body. There isn't. Um, and, that, and that was just, and I, as you said, I'm not an activist, but that is my way of kind of processing what's going on and saying, well, if we reverse this, how much sense does it make? It doesn't make sense at all. It's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously, for those of you who don't know, your surname does give it away, but your father is Letia Hearn. And when people talk about issues being politicised, do you think they miss the point a bit? Because politics is just people talking oh about issues that affect people every day. You sound like my dad. <laughs> I, I grew up, um, all, but the thing he used to always say was politics is about people. Mm -hmm. That's what politics is. It's about those everyday issues and you know he, he was an absolute workaholic so whenever I was with him he was constantly working and I was seeing people would always approach him and he would always have his little notebook and pen in his pocket and write down what they're saying and um, so and that was that's my understanding of politics you know that direct contact with people and trying to better their lives you were 21 when yeah. you published PS I love you huge global success and with that came a bit of ageism mm. yeah directed absolutely. at you what was your experience of that because you know being a young successful man can often be seen differently to being a young successful woman it certainly did, and at 21, people were questioning whether I wrote it. Mm. Um, did my dad get me the deal? Mm. Uh, did my mom write it? And I was, you know, it was a big secret that I was promoting it. There was all kind of odd conspiracy theories, but, but that aside, people were questioning at 21, what experience of life do you have, and how can you write these stories? And I would always explain, you know, from the moment we're born, we feel, we feel, you know, children feel deeply, and also as an author. 
the job is to be empathetic, mm. you know, and to have imagination and, and mix those things together in order to be, a, to be able to write a story. So a lot of it was so focused on my age and whether I deserved it. I felt like I always had to justify my success and say, I know this doesn't always happen and I'm almost, I'm very sorry that it's happened and I know I broke the rules. Um, uh, yeah, so I, for a long time I felt like I, I was like that, yeah. but not anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> What's your next big venture? What are you going to tackle next in your writing? In my writing, well, I'm almost, I'm at the final edit stages of my next novel. Mm -hmm. So, um, and my brief to myself was, this is not the 31st story of Roar. Mm -hmm. I like to, with each novel, I like to move in a different direction, yeah. change the tone, change the character, change the story. So I've gone very different again in another direction. Well, let's put a date in the diary for breakfast this time next year. Deal. To talk about <laughs> your next book. Cecilia, really lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much.